Yesterday, Justice Michael Lee handed down his judgment in the defamation case Bruce Lerman brought against journalist Lisa Wilkinson and Network 10, finding that it was more likely than not that Lerman raped fellow Liberal staffer Brittany Higgins in 2019 and therefore was not defamed. There is nothing simple or straightforward about this case, but today TDF fact checker Lucy Tassel and I will endeavour to unpack it. Yesterday, Sam, we watched federal court judge Michael Lee hand down a judgment in a case that has, I think it's safe to say, really captured the nation's attention. So can you take me back to the start? So to do that, we have to go back to 2019. And Brittany Higgins and Bruce Lerman were staffers for Defence Minister Linda Reynolds in Canberra. And as Justice Lee outlined in court yesterday, his understanding of the facts is that the two went out for drinks after work with a big group of friends to several venues around Canberra. Then they returned to Parliament House, their workplace, uh, and went into Reynolds' office. And this was the early hours of the next morning. Now, Justice Lee found that it's more likely than not, and we're going to come back to what exactly that means, that Bruce Lerman raped Brittany Higgins at that office. So that's March 2019. That's a long way from April 2024. Mm. What has happened in those intervening years? So then we fast forward two years to February of 2021, and that's when Brittany Higgins went to the media with these allegations that she had been raped in Parliament House by an unnamed, at that point, political staffer, which we now know is Bruce Lerman. And I just want to be really clear, in a criminal court, he has always denied this. And in fact, he's always denied any sex sexual contact happened between them. Higgins sat down with interviews with News.com Today U, Samantha Maiden was the journalist there, and with journalist Lisa Wilkinson, who was then working with the Network 10 show The Project. The interview with Wilkinson and the story in News.com Today U came out on the same day. That was February 15th, 2021. So you've mentioned that this case that Lerman's brought this case against Lisa Wilkinson and Network 10, Mm. but you have mentioned news.com.au. So were they also being sued? Yeah, they were also being sued. And so was the ABC for broadcasting a speech by Higgins, uh, as well as Wilkinson and Network 10. But Lerman actually settled the cases with news.com.au and ABC on the first day of these exact proceedings last year. So we've started with these very publicised allegations, but they're made against a person who we don't know who they are. It's an unnamed person. Hmm. So how do we get to knowing who Bruce Lerman is? Well, this is actually the first bit of what Justice Lee needed to establish in his judgment yesterday, Mm -hmm. because in order to sue someone for defamation, you need to make it clear that they're talking about you. Mm. And Justice Lee found that Yeah, a reasonable person would ascertain that the person who was the subject of Brittany Higgins' comments in that project interview was Bruce Lerman. Mm. Uh, Even though Brittany Higgins didn't specify the name of who she alleged had raped her. um, But, you know, one of the first things that Justice Lee found was that he was identifiable. Justice Lee said he was, quote, amply satisfied that Lerman was identified. And this was based on evidence given by witnesses that he described as, quote, telltale. So what was this telltale evidence? Well, Justice Lee turned to the fact that Lerman and Higgins had been at drinks on the night in question, that he was at the time of the interview working in Sydney, Mm. which Lerman was, and some loose details about the job he'd had before working for Reynolds. And all of this, plus a few other points, were enough for some witnesses with, quote, specific knowledge of the situation to know who Higgins was talking about. So picture somebody you know, watching this interview on television, Mm. these facts started to emerge in Brittany Higgins' interview. That was enough to really say, yes, I think I know who they're talking about. But the public only really became aware Mm. of Bruce Lerman as the subject of this when the matter proceeded to a criminal trial in 2021. So what happened with that criminal trial? Well, that trial was suspended due to juror misconduct and a retrial was later abandoned. And Mm. I think that's what makes this defamation case really notable because there was never a criminal finding either way about what happened on that night in March 2019, and there still isn't, and I think that's an important point. But now there is a civil finding. But this case, yeah, really moved into then the question of reputational damage. So Lerman believes that he's been identified, despite not being named, in this original interview that kind of gets the ball rolling on this and now that there hasn't been a criminal trial his name is just sort of 
out there mm. associated with this unproven allegation. So is that why what kind of brings him to this point of bringing a defamation case? Exactly. And then this kind of forms then the second and third parts of what Justice Lee needed to establish mm -hmm. to work out whether Lerman had been defamed. And so once we had established that it was, in fact, Lerman who was the subject of the interview, we then move on to is the content of the interview, the claims made against Lerman, are they true or not? If they were true, then Channel 10 and Lisa Wilkinson could rely on what's called the truth defense. Right. So in order to kind of prove the truth defense, it almost became, you know, a forensic trial in nature. There were witnesses being called who were on security at Parliament House that night. There were people who were at the drink. There was ex-partners of both parties mm. because what the court needed to ascertain is whether or not what Channel 10 were claiming about Bruce Lerman was true. But they needed to do so not beyond a reasonable doubt, but on the balance of probabilities. I definitely have heard the phrase beyond a reasonable doubt used before in terms of criminal cases. So what's the balance of probabilities? How's that different? So in the criminal system and the civil system, there's two different burdens of proof. And a burden of proof is the words used to describe what a party needs to prove in order to prosecute a case. Now, in the criminal system, the burden of proof is beyond a reasonable doubt. Mm -hmm. And what that essentially means is in the mind of the judge or a jury, there needs to be no doubt in their mind that what is being claimed did indeed happen. Mm. So think about something like speeding in your car. It's beyond a reasonable doubt because you were either going 100 kilometers an hour or you weren't going 100 kilometers an hour. Uh, and so it's the job of a prosecutor to really prove that there's absolutely no doubt that this happened. In a civil system, we use a burden of proof called the balance of probabilities. And the question that needs to be answered here is, is it more likely than not that something happened? Mm. So think about it almost as like 51%. Right. Is it 51% likely that this happened? And there's more chance that it did happen than it didn't happen. And so that was the level of proof that Justice Lee was looking at when making his determination yesterday. And Justice Lee did find that it is more likely than not that Lerman did rape Higgins in Minister Reynolds' office in March 2019. Bruce Lerman's not going to jail over this? No. So these have no relevance in the kind of criminal world. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the criminal justice system, Bruce Lerman has neither been found guilty or not guilty. The yeah. trial was never finished. So Justice Michael Lee has handed down uh, a 300-page-plus decision. So what else was kind of in that judgment? Well, look, there was a lot. And, you know, we have this 300-page decision that, when printed, would look and feel like a novel. Mm -hmm. um, we also had yesterday, I think it was two and a half hours of judgment yeah. delivered. Felt like more. Yeah, it was very long. And mm -hmm. so there's lots of analysis by Justice Lee. He goes through systematically every witness mm -hmm. almost who was called, uh, discusses the reliability of everybody from Brittany Higgins Bruce Lerman, Lisa Wilkinson, everybody involved in the case, really. And what he found notably was that Bruce Lerman was found to have told, quote, deliberate lies mm. about, quote, important issues in the case. Now, he also said that Higgins, who testified in the case to support Ten and Wilkinson's case, mm -hmm. had said, quote, untruths or distortions herself yeah. throughout giving evidence. So what happens now? Well, we have another court date, uh, and that's the 22nd of April, so we don't have to wait too long for that. And that's when parties submit what's called costs. And costs is essentially, think of it as a receipt of how mm. much it has cost for the legal representation that the parties have had to have to present their case at this trial. And what typically happens, and we don't know whether this is going to happen for sure, but it's, it's reasonably likely that Lerman will be ordered to either partially or fully cover the legal costs mm. of 10 and Wilkinson. And this is almost a recognition from the court that in failing to convince the court of his argument, uh, somebody has to foot the bill. Right. And so, I mean, that could be in the millions of dollars. And we're not going to know exactly how much that wow. is until the 22nd of April. That's when the parties have to submit their costs to the court. And then Justice Lee will go back and review them and work out how much Bruce Lerman has to pay. Now, it's really important that we also acknowledge that Bruce Lerman has the option to appeal this civil case. Mm. So whilst it might feel like a conclusion and the end of the road, it's not exactly the end of this story. But a big moment in defamation law and mm. in media law here in Australia. 